Today, we will finally crack the mystery of musical intervals. An interval is the distance between two notes. If I tell you to separate two posts two meters away from each other, you will know what I mean because we both agree in what a meter is like. When musicians communicate with each other, with the intention of combining notes, adding notes to chords, moving up or down in pitch, learning things like harmony, etc., we use intervals as a way of measuring the distance between two notes. We will use traditional notation for those who can read music and note names for those who cannot. Intervals can be harmonic or melodic. A harmonic interval is the distance between two notes that sound at the same time. A melodic interval is the distance between two notes that sound one after the other. This can be ascending or descending. The name of an interval has two parts, the quality and the number. When I say minor third, minor is the quality and third is the number. When I say perfect fifth, Perfect is the quality and fifth is the number. Firstly, we will learn to determine the number of an interval. Suppose I have this interval here. To find out the number, I need to count how many notes they are apart, ignoring any flat or sharp. This is very important. With the method I'm going to teach you, to determine the number, you start counting from 1, and to determine the quality, you start counting from 0. We are now determining the number, so I start counting from 1. 1, 2, 3, 4. This is a fourth. We don't care at the moment if it's a perfect or augmented fourth. We are now working on the second part of a name of an interval, the number. Let's find out the number of this interval. I ignore the sharp and I just consider this a D. From D to B I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6. This is a sixth. I don't care at the moment if this is a major or a minor. Let's see this one. I count this, ignoring the flats. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and I have 8. We call this an octave. We will check if this is a perfect octave in the future. Let's count this one. And I have a 1. This is then called unison. Unisons sound the same pitch, unless it's augmented, which we will see later in this video. Now we will talk about the quality of the interval. These are the numbers we know so far. Unison, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, octave. Unisons Octaves 4th and 5th can be perfect, diminished or augmented. 2nd, 3rd, 6th and 7th can be minor, major, diminished or augmented. To work out the quality of an interval, we create a table making sure we list the following 12 intervals the most conventional. Perfect unison, minor second, major second, 
minor third, major third, perfect fourth, augmented fourth or diminished fifth, perfect fifth, minor sixth, major sixth, minor seventh, major seventh, perfect octave. The minimum distance between two notes in traditional Western music is the semitone. Each of these intervals have a fixed number of semitones. With the list we made, we can easily create a table of the number of semitones each interval has. The perfect unison has zero semitones. A minor second has one. A major second has two. A minor third has three. And so on. Now remember this. The number of the interval is counted from one. But the semitones are counted from zero. For example, here we have a third. One, two, three. But the number of semitones is four. Zero, one, two, three, four. We look at our table and we have that this is a major third, as major thirds have four semitones. Here we have a sixth. One, two, three, four, five, six. But what is the quality? Let's count the semitones. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have nine semitones. So looking in our table, this is a major sixth. Here we have a fourth. One, two, three, four, but to find the quality, we need to count the semitones. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six. Looking at our table, we have that this is an augmented fourth. Now, this is when the intervals go mad. What happens if I have this? I work out the number and this is a third. One, two, three. I count the semitones. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. And I get a five. It's clearly a third, but it's greater than a major third. What is it then? It is an augmented third. When the number of semitones is too big for what is specified in our table, we are facing an augmented interval. When the number of semitones is too small for what is specified in our table, we are facing a diminished interval. If I have this interval, I know that this is a seventh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If I count the semitones, I have nine semitones. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But I don't have seventh with nine semitones in my table. I have one minor seventh with 10, and a major seventh with 11, but not one with nine. So this is a diminished seventh. Octaves can also be diminished. Look at this. I count and I have an octave. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I count the semitones. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 
11. And I have 11. There are no octaves with 11 semitones in my table. So we are facing a diminished octave. Here I have a G and a G sharp. It is a unison. But if I count the semitones, these two notes are a semitone apart. And two notes in a unison should have no semitones in between, according to our table. Then this is an augmented unison. Now, do diminished unisons exist? I leave it for you to find out and write your answer in a comment below. Now, how about intervals greater than an octave? Well, once you understood the conventional intervals, intervals greater than an octave can be treated in the same way. A minor ninth is simply the equivalent of an octave plus a minor second. A major ninth is the equivalent of an octave plus a major second, and so on. That is why a major ninth is also known as a compound major second. This is a table of equivalence. Minor ninth is a compound minor second. Major ninth is a compound major second. Minor tenth is a compound minor third. Major tenth is a compound major third. A perfect eleventh is a compound perfect fourth, and so on. I hope you liked the video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button. See you next time.